if you Hey friends, it is me Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I am doing my September wrap up. So, I had a pretty good reading month in September. I read 10 books, which is amazing. I think that's like the second best. This is the second best month I had. Uh, July was my best month, I think. So, yeah, it was just crazy. Um, I think it helps that I was doing readathons so I was trying to like read for them but I also I wasn't like pressuring myself to read for them either so it was kind of just like really like simple and slow and I ended up reading about 3,000 pages which is pretty nice as well I think it also helped that I actually started using my bullet journal my reading th journal this month I got my reading journal in August and so I set it up to where I would start using it in September and I was so excited like the first day of September I was like I can start using all my things like my pages tracker and just all that kind of stuff and I think it helped a lot because I wanted like I was so excited to use it that it made me want to read more because I was like oh my gosh I read so many pages I can mark that down in my thing and like all that kind of stuff so I think it helps keep me motivated because it's like oh I'm doing this cool thing that like helps bring out my creativity well it also helps me keep on track to read because if I read it means I can fill out my bullet journal more and if I fill out my bullet journal more then I'm happy so I think that like correlation just really really helped me this past month I didn't realize like how cool tracking your pages was until I did it and then I was like wow that's actually really helpful and that's actually very it's very encouraging because it's like okay I like read this many and I'm actually like making a dent in my unread books and stuff like that so yeah, just just all the fun things a lot of the books I read were for readathons some of them were just books that I picked up uh, I participated in Harry Potter House Battles and the Monsterathon, and I was supposed to participate in Zodiacathon, but to be honest, I really failed at that one, so I'm not even gonna add that to the list. So a lot of these I read for those two, which I th I will clarify which ones I read for which one. Um, some of them overlap, so they'll just be similar. But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and just talk to you guys about what I read. So the first book that I managed to read was Vampire Kisses 2, which was Kissing Coffins by Ellen Schreiber. This is a reread for me. I want to reread the series because I had the last book and I haven't read the last book yet, so I want to reread through the whole series just to make sure like I'm caught up and I can remember everything and then get to the last book so I can actually officially finish the series. I've had it for years and I just haven't picked it up. Mostly, I don't even know why, just I didn't. So I'm hoping that by rereading, it'll motivate me to actually finish the series. Um, this was part of my fall TBR, which I managed to check that off the list. I also read this for Monsterathon. It was for the prompt of, I think, Classic Creepers or something like that. And then I also read this for the House Battles. So this handled uh, challenges for both of those readathons. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars because it was a reread and it was still super good. Uh, <laughs> definitely, like, really cliche, but, like... I didn't mind it. I still love it. Like, I love the nostalgia of it, so I'm excited to pick up the third one. I don't know when I'm going to do that yet, but we shall see. The next book I read was Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. I gave this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I originally gave it 3 stars, but then after, like, really, really thinking about it, I bumped it down because it just wasn't that good. It, I think this is Courtney Summers' first book, and I just, comparing it to Sadie, which I know I shouldn't compare her books like that but just comparing it to Sadie like Sadie was just so much better like so much better written the characters were so so much more developed and this it was just like frustrating that's like all I felt throughout the book and even now all I feel is just like frustration and anger towards these characters because I just feel like they just weren't developed well or written well I don't even know but I just did not really enjoy this as much as I thought I would but I'm glad I read it because it was something I had been wanting to read for a while and I'm glad I at least got to do that and like just check it off that like long old TBR list I used to have so yeah um I don't want to get into too much details because like spoilers and all that kind of stuff and I really don't want to turn this into a rant video and I don't want this to be super long anyways just because I don't want to edit any more long videos for a while I will say, uh, 
trigger warnings for this are depression, um, talks of attempted suicide, flashbacks to attempted suicide, and flashbacks to a potential sexual assault. So yeah, that's just all I'm going to say for that. And if you want to know more, I have my review up on Goodreads. And yeah, so just that's just all I have to say. I read this for the Monsterathon and the Harry Potter House Battles as well. And this was also part of my fall TBR, so I got that checked off the list as well. The next two books that I read were books that I picked up at a, a secondhand store. These weren't part of any TBRs or anything. I was just so excited when I got them that I wanted to like read them and see what they're about. So I managed to find these two like, they're sort of like graphic novels, but they're like the Meet the Scouts guides to Sailor Moon. So like you flip through them and they, it tells you about the Sailor Scout that you're like reading about. So this one's about Mercury and this one's about Mars. And it tells you their favorite episodes and the kind of outfits that they like to wear and just like little tidbits and you're just literally getting to know the characters. And I just loved these so much that I was like, why not? And they're like a dollar, so I'll buy them. I managed to get a Sailor Jupiter one too as well. I just haven't read that one yet. I want to finish this like set now and get the Sailor Moon and the Sailor Venus version too because I feel like that would be really cool. But yeah, definitely adding these. I gave them 5 out of 5 stars because they're cool and I'm obsessed, so I like them. The next book that I read was Every Heart Adore by Shannon McGuire and ooh, Meganus. I do not know what I was expecting when I read this, but I it threw my expectations out of the window. I read this for the two readathons I was participating in, Monsters On and Harry Potter House Battles. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I don't know okay so like I picked this up thinking it was like a middle grade for some reason because I like had seen people talk about it but not really talk about it like they talked about how much they loved it they talked about like all that kind of stuff and how like diverse it was but they never mentioned what this was about really like they kind of did but not really and they didn't mention like what you would find when reading this so I just was just like oh I guess it's just another middle grade that everybody likes sure I'll read it and then <laughs> And then I got like a couple pages and I was like, this isn't a middle grade. This is not a middle grade at all. But like, I still enjoyed it. And for something like so dark, which again, I was not expecting this to be as dark it was it was, I literally enjoyed it so much, which is like rare for me. Cause like with dark books, I could either hate it or love it. It really is a one or the other thing for me, but I loved this so much. I don't know if I want to continue on in this like series, even though it's not really a series but I wouldn't mind it if I decided to do it. I enjoyed the div diversity a lot. Uh, I enjoyed the writing and just the world and the characters too because it was just so intriguing to see how intricate everything was and um, there's even a quote in here that I think I want to get a tattoo of because it like I read it and then it just like hit me and I was like whoa that was a punch in the gut kind of thing. Well, I'll share the quote with you because it's not a spoiler or anything. It was she was a story, not an epilogue. And I don't, it's like such a short sentence, but I read that and I was like, my life. But yeah, I just love this so much. And I'm so like happy I picked it up randomly and just decided to just throw this into the TBR pile. So I don't know, I don't know. The next book that I read was volume one of My Hero Academia. I read this for Monster Thon. I give this 5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this anime so much. I even got my cousin hooked on this anime because I just kept talking to him about it. And um, I figured I wanted to try the manga. And it was basically kind of the same as the anime. So I didn't really like learn anything new since this is like the beginning. <laughs> but I still enjoyed it. Still love this world and the characters. And definitely recommend this if you're looking for some like intriguing manga to pick up or whatever. I say if you're a fan of like... Hunter x Hunter, um, maybe Naruto or like fairy tale, like kind of those, like it's not exactly like those, but just kind of like that vibe. I feel like this would be something you would enjoy too. So keep that in mind. The next book I finished was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I finally finished. So I remember like not liking this movie at all. So I was a little like, wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the book yet. Uh, before I picked it up, but I enjoyed this as well. I loved getting the li the like more detailed things because I read this and then I watched the movie again, which I hadn't seen in years. I realized that the Goblet of Fire movie is where they start to really diverge from the books 
and so I'm glad that I read this and was able to get the details. Um, still sad that I haven't met Luna yet. I know it's in, she's in the next book, but I'm just like, where is she? But still enjoyed this, gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I just like loved just going into this world, honestly, in like word form, because it just, it solidified a lot of things that maybe I wasn't clear about when I watched the movies, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, still sad about Cedric. Honestly, he was the best Hufflepuff. Also, because I'm a Hufflepuff, I like, his death hit me a little harder. I was like, oh no, fellow Huffle, are you okay? Obviously not because you're dead, but are you okay? Also, like, I slowly realized how, like, the guys take Hermione for granted. She does a lot for them, and they just, like, they're just so mean to her and so rude, honestly. So, yeah. Also, Ron is just not my favorite. I just, like, find him so annoying, if that makes sense. Same with Snape. Like, like, just, just, no. Yeah, whatever. Moving on. Okay. The next book I finished was The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. If you have not watched my review video for this, I'm gonna put the link above and below because like you should watch it and get an idea of whether this is a book you want to read or not. I personally loved it and I cannot wait until the second one comes out. I just want it already so I can read it and find out what happens. I recommend uh, looking at the reviews, like just looking at positive and negative reviews of this before you go out and buy it just to decide if it is something you want to read. I always recommend that to people for whatever book um, they're looking into. But I definitely recommend this, though, if you just, like, love vampires, love the vibe of them, like, really want to get back into them. I think this could be that book that brings them back, honestly. So I'm just so excited for everybody else to experience this and just to hear what everybody else thinks. I'm, like, worried, but I'm just excited at the same time because vampires! And this was just such a beautiful story. And I just, yeah, I just want to know what happens next. <laughs> the next book I read was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Finally, I read this, and oh my goodness, I see what everybody loves about it so much. I, oh, like, I loved this. Like, it was so funny, and yet so heartwarming, and so lovely. Like, I don't even know <laughs> what else to say about it that anybody else hasn't said. Um, I enjoyed Alex and Henry so, so much. I think I liked... Oh, like, I don't even know if I liked one more than the other. I think I liked them the same. Like, I love them both the same because they just brought different things to the story that you don't even realize you needed in the story. Like, Alex was so energetic but so honest to who he was and just wasn't afraid to be himself no matter what. And he... Uh, he's just so... Uh. And then, like, Henry was just so soft and sweet and he was so like comforting and loving and he just like engulfed you in like who he was when he could and uh, I just, it was so many things and then their squad like I love books that have squads of like friends and the fact that there were three different like two different squads that converged into one because of this book and it, it made my heart happy I was like they're one big squad now and it's like squad goals to the max and I just love it so much and I can't stop gushing because uh, okay I need to breathe but yeah, just, this was so good. I <laughs> I don't even know. I don't think I had any issues with it at all, honestly. And I just, like, want more and more people to write this. I wish she would go back into this world to write it, write more. But I also understand if she doesn't because it's just so perfect. And I don't, like, I feel like if she went back to write more and something, like, ruined it, I'd be so sad. But definitely love it. I definitely want to read some, anything else that Casey McQuiston writes because... I feel like she could be a new like NA author that I love so yeah so cute I literally want to befriend them like I feel like they would be the type of person people that I would just love to have as friends and just like hang out with all the time legit all the time all right the last book that I read in October was someone like you by Sarah Dessen this is a buddy read that I did with Carrie from Carrie the book belt and Haley from Haley Marie I uh, love them so much we keep like doing buddy reads together and it's just so fun whenever we do and I just love talking to them and I love the fact that we're all friends and all this kind of stuff. Editing Alana here, um, so after reading this and like discussing it more with Carrie and Haley and then like obviously it was after I had filmed this, um, I changed a lot of my opinions on this book. I gave it I think a three star and Maybe it was 2.5. 2.5 or 3 stars I gave it. And, um, 
Yeah, it was like okay. I think the main issue I had was just the way Haley treated her mom. Like, it was just kind of bad. And then like, I don't know. I just, it was just okay. It was kind of slow. Kind of like not much happening really. Um, I think the only redeeming quality was the friendship. Like I loved Haley and Scarlett's friendship. Um, but other than that, it was just not the greatest book, which is okay. Like, I still love Sarah Dustin, still love her books, but, like, just wasn't my favorite. I feel like her earlier books are probably just not going to be my faves until I get to, like, just listen, which is my all-time fave. So, that's okay. But just wanted to throw that in here. Um, so, yeah. Bye. All right, so that is my September wrap-up. Those are all the books I read and the readathons that I participated in. Um, I did okay in those readathons. I didn't finish my whole entire TBR, but I think I did pretty good for the most part. If you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments on any of the books I read, whether you like them, whether you want to read them, whether you didn't like them, please let me know down below. If you are not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. I'm stealing the idea from my friend Sibio from Wishfulment. And if you want to keep seeing more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You're awesome flowers in a world full of weeds.